Hello. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Explicit Movement 6 Parent Power Hour. Tonight's topic is titled A Parent's Role When Your Teenager or Young Adult Child Dates. And we are joined tonight by Michelle Okimura, the Executive Director of Explicit Movement, with special guest panel, Pastor Daryl and Claudia Yamada, and Pastor Cal and Joy Chinin. Throughout this Zoom, please feel free to ask your questions via private chat to me. My name's Elisa, and I will pass your questions on um, having to do with our topic to Michelle. We'll do our best to answer them, and later on, we'll post the audio recording of tonight's event on a private YouTube page. So if we don't have your email already, go ahead and private message it to me, and we'll make sure we get you that link. So now, without further, further ado, here is Explicit Movement's Michelle Okimura. Well, welcome everyone. Just so happy to have all of you. Um, just, just to introduce myself, I'm Michelle, and I wanted to just share a couple sentences about Explicit Movement, just for newcomers who may not know what Explicit Movement is about. Um, but really, we have a heart for you, you parents. You guys are on the front lines working with your kids, and so we want to, we want to just cheer you on, and we want to say we believe in you, and we just want to support you. And we know that many parents have struggled, you know, to talk, to talk with their kids about uh, sex or sexuality topics. So we want to equip you with relevant faith-based resources so you can have those conversations with confidence. And, and we know that when you are empowered, you are able then to help young people in your life uh, to navigate and avoid damaging experiences and instead prepare them for healthy, thriving relationships in God's timing and design. And so really that's what we're here to, here to do. And tonight I am so excited to have four of my, some of my favorite people in the world, uh, just dear friends for years, um, Pastor Cal and Joy and Pastor Daryl and Claudia. And we, um, they, they have, I'll let them introduce themselves. Maybe um, you can share a little bit about your family, you know, how many kids you have, how old they are now. Um, and then I, then after a little introduction that you share about yourself, then I'll go into some questions, but they, I just love them. They have so much wisdom and experience. Uh, they have adult children, so they've been through it. You know, they've been up through the ups and downs of parenting. And, and I just want to say too, that, you know, every child is different. Every situation is unique. And in the end, we all just need the Holy Spirit to help guide us in those sticky situations that we really don't know what to do. However, there is wisdom and tips and ideas that we can glean from couples who have gone before us, right? So um, without further ado, uh, why don't we start with uh, Pastor Cal and Joy. You want to just share a little bit about your family, how many kids you have? Hey, we, um, we've been married for 43 years. We made 43 years this year. And we have three children, um, a boy, Micah, and he's 39. He's going to be 40 this year. And uh, Karis, our daughter, she's involved with the explicit movement and her husband too, Marion. And then our son, Daniel, and his wife, Erin. And oh, I forgot to say Micah has, oh, his wife is Joanna. They have three children. Kara says two, and Daniel and Aaron have three. And they're all happily married. And so that's kind of cool to, you know, we're, I'm looking forward I to know, so much better, way better than us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you. And what about um, you, you guys, Daryl and Cardi? Well, hi, um, I'm Daryl. This is my wife, Claudia. We've been married uh, 36 years and uh, it's been a real joy. We have three kids, uh, three children. Uh, Micah, who's the oldest, he's married. Uh, his wife, Kelly, they've been married for almost two years and they actually have our first grand granddaughter. Yay! <laughs> uh, the hardest part about that one is that uh, they're living in Oregon right now. And so we're not able to travel and actually visit our granddaughter. We got a chance to see her live once in January before all of this happened. Um, so that was a real blessing. But uh, yeah, they are happily married. And we have two other daughters, Christiane and Carissa. Um, and they're going to be, not quite yet, but they're going to be 26 and 24. And uh, they are a real blessing and joy. But uh, we're a little bit behind the Chinens in terms of 
progress down this road, um, but I do know that a lot of things that we actually have also gleaned came from watching them, uh, the Chinens. And so it's just a blessing to kind of be here, but thanks for allowing us to share. Oh, thank you. You know, this is such a topic that often is not talked about, you know? I mean, my parents never taught me how to navigate to dating. And so I didn't really know how to do, my husband and I did our best. And we got ideas from people here and there, but this is such an important topic. And so I'm so glad we're, we're addressing it and hope all this will all be a blessing to all the parents. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna jump into some questions. I have some great ones coming up. Um, well, maybe the first question could be, did you allow your, your children to date in high school? Why or why not? And Chinens, you wanna start first? Cal and Joy? Yeah. Um, I'm going to let Joy answer that question because she was, she was the one that really, she might look the nicer of the two of us, but she's the enforcer. <laughs> she is the enforcer, you know, she's the rock in our family. So, um, um, yeah, you want to, you want to start well, off? Well, um, I always told the kids just be friends with everybody, you know, I don't know if they actually asked us about dating but I think we addressed it by just said be friends with everybody um, you know be in groups go out in groups with all your friends um, that's the better way I said that's best that you're um, friends with everybody and um, I guess we kind of did tell them that they couldn't or they couldn't have a boyfriend or girlfriend in high school and the reason I gave was I think well Maybe I'm acting on fear, but I said there's just too many temptations out there. And, you know, a lot of the teenagers um, were getting pregnant. And um, so I just didn't want them to have to face um, that hardship and pain. And so um, I just said, yeah, I, it's best that you just be friends with everybody. Well, one part of the reason was that, um, you know, the value of being a part of a church family is, uh, especially when it's multi-generational, you get to glean from those who have gone before you. And, and that's been the, one of the greatest privileges that we've had. So we had uh, Glenn and Peggy Shimabukuro, and, and Peggy just said, you know, she and she had these outstanding sons. They were outstanding. And even to this day, they're outstanding. Um, you know, one is a principal and the other is a physical therapist. And they've both married incredible women, have wonderful children themselves. But um, they really made it a point that um, they said, they told their sons, um, you can date, but you cannot have a boyfriend or girlfriend um, in high school. And, and that really was the inspiration for us, mm -hmm. right? Remember? And so Joy, but she had the guts. I thought, man, I don't know if I can say that, man. But Joy had the guts to say, you know, hey, listen, it's okay to date and have fun on your dates. But uh, as far as having a steady boyfriend or girlfriend and you're going with someone, no, uh, wait on that. Um, and, and it worked really well for our, our, for our first two because Michael always had girls going after him. <laughs> and so, <laughs> uh, he had the problem. He never asked for a date in high school because um, all the girls was asking him. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, he must take after his mom because I never, I <laughs> never had that happen to me. But, um, but, uh, but Karis, I mean, Karis was asked out a lot too. Um, but actually, cars shared later on, and, and, and Michael too, they actually felt protected um, by that, um, that it, they didn't feel the pressure. Well, you had to, because there's a lot of peer pressure. You're supposed to have a boyfriend. You're supposed to have a girlfriend. And what's wrong with you if you don't, you know? And both of them are going to public schools. And, and I mean, honestly, uh, at, and this was 20 years ago, okay? This really ages us, but at graduation, there'd be a whole slew of young mothers. I mean, with all their baby crits. And, and it was strollers, with all their strollers, not baby crits. And it was kind of a mark of honor when you brought your baby to school. 
you know, and all the other girls would flock around and, and that scared me half to death. I got to admit, that. <laughs> but, um, but no, but having the, seeing the modeling and the hope um, that was laid before us and the great, and, and I think this was number one, was that they really taught us that the teen years will be the best years of your relationship together. And, and that's what it turned out to be. It was just fabulous. And all their friends could come over to our house. And that was just part of the whole deal um, of, of uh, just enjoying them. You know, it was so enjoyable. The teen years were among some of the best years, you know. Yeah, because the, the word out there is that, oh, what happened? Oh, someone else signed in from Oak. So we're going to have to... Well, no. Oh, uh oh, oh, you have something on your side. <laughs> yeah, we got signed out. So, oh, oh I go. still see you. Yeah, we still see oh. you and hear you. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. And yeah, that um, the psychologist said that it, you know the teen years are the hardest years and all that. And so I remember we just really prayed about it that um, we're not going to accept that. Um, we felt it was worldly wisdom. And um, yeah, and it really turned out great that um, we really enjoyed our teens, our, the teen years with our kids. Um, yeah, it was a huge, huge blessing uh, um, for us. Thank you for sharing that. You know, before I go to the Yamadas, I, uh, someone had a question. How did you feel about the girls asking Micah out? You know, the girls kind of pursuing him. <laughs> How did, did you, did you guys feel, oh, you find about that? How, how did you, did you, did you have any feelings about that or how did you respond? Well, they couldn't be his girlfriends. So <laughs> 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 yeah, so it was like, it was mostly like for proms. Oh, right, right. Proms and banquets, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. They would ask him. He didn't yeah. have to ask anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you for sharing. And you did mention the power of prayer too. So oh, that man. is underline it all right so yes now when it came to our third one though daniel the one who's gonna take over as pastor over at mgmc um I, we we didn't enforce the same thing because we let the holy spirit lead us <laughs> <laughs> i just said come on let's let daniel date let's let them let him let us have him i mean have a girlfriend right right like, um, okay this is the experiment okay <laughs> Daniel is so steady. He's so, he like he's like joy. He's like a rock. But the neat thing you know? is he didn't. He yeah. didn't go out and get a girlfriend. Yeah. Wow. That's so, so neat. neat. Yeah. So neat. Now, uh, Daryl and Claudia, you, I even know in our discussion before, you had some thoughts too about um, dating and the purpose for dating that you explained to your kids. Can you share some of that with the parents? Sure. Um you know, for us, I think it was an influence that something that one, I, you know, I had in the back of my head, but also I think from our church when we lived on the mainland, uh, it was something that was also imparted to us was this whole aspect of courting. And because relationships, um, you know, have purpose. And, and because of that, um, we, we told our kids, I think something similar to, you know, what Cal and Joy were saying was that you know, they could go out with friends and they could go out with groups if they wanted to. But uh, in terms of building a, a relationship with somebody of the opposite sex, you know, I said, you know, what is the logical conclusion? Uh, see, I remember even as a, a teenager myself, I remember many years ago, I was working uh, at the cannery and I was talking to this, this friend that I was working with and he was talking about his girlfriend. And I remember asking him, do you, are you planning to marry your girlfriend? And he goes, no, why? And I, I, that struck me as odd because I've always felt that, you know, if you're gonna pursue a relationship with somebody of the opposite sex, then I would, imagine, I would think that the logical conclusion should be to, um, to get married. And so for, our kids, what we, we talked to them about was this whole aspect of courting. You know, God wants and desires for people to have uh, healthy relationships. Um, 
and even healthy physical relationships, but obviously that's within the context of marriage. And so this whole process of we're, we were saying that in high school, you cannot get to that point. And so I remember our, our, our son, and he gave me permission to, you know, to say this, is that when he first started to get attracted to um, his, actually his wife now, um, you know, I, we were kind of like dealing with that whole issue and, and talking with him because we said, you know, this happened, I think, his senior year in high school. And uh, we, we told him that, you know, we had talked to him earlier about courting. And at this point, it's, it's just not viable in terms of what it can lead to. And he thought that we were, we didn't like his wife. And by the way, Kelly is just a wonderful, wonderful daughter-in-law. We love her dearly. And I remember telling him, you know, Micah, if we had this conversation four years from now, we would be having something totally different. And so it was more the situation because, again, we held the value that we really feel that as you get involved and in because of hormones and emotions and temptations that, uh, you know, there needs to be a logical or purpose behind just dating. And, and that should be leading toward marriage. And I think that's one of the reasons why we, we kind of valued courtship and, uh, and the intention behind it. And so we, that's what we had told our, our kids and um, God's grace. That's kind of what they, what they had toward. I mean, like Claudia, she's my first and only girlfriend. And she's the only person that I've ever been with. And I'm happy to say, actually, Micah is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Kelly is his first girlfriend and is now his wife. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we're, we're just kind of blessed like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, anyway, that's our story. But you want to add anything? Yeah. Um, for, for Micah, you know, it's like when you're in high school, you know, you... Um, you can't get married at that point and you don't have the financial means to support, you know, um, your wife. And, and um, a lot of times you're just trying to find out who you are, you know, so emotionally you're still not mature yet because you're still in the process of discovering yourself. So, yeah, so just like with um, Joy, you know, just encouraging them to um, be in groups and be friends with everyone and just enjoy each other that way. Yeah, I think what Claudia said, if I could just interject this, that that is so true that as in the teen years in particular, and, and by the way, by God's grace to, uh, you know, what Joy was sharing, we had wonderful teen years with our kids. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, we did not receive rebellion. We prayed against that. And by God's grace, really, we, uh, the teen years were not rebellious at all. We had wonderful time with our kids. But during that, that time, they're still in so much in the process of discovering who they are, God's purpose for their lives, their destinies. And, um, yeah, relationships can just muck that up because <laughs> you don't know who you are yet. And so how can you give yourself to somebody when you don't even know, really understand who you are yet? So anyway, I just wanted to add that too. Oh, that's good. So basically when you explain to them about marriage and the purpose for marriage, it's just, you just shared it just like, is it just basically how you just shared it with us just now, just kind of just talking from the heart mm -hmm. and just. Yeah, reminders. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. So good. So good. Um, you know, I I wanted to. Um, we're gonna come back to the dating, but I just wanted to build. Um, go back to the foundation for these dating kind of questions and relationship with your kids is a heart connection. Um, that we talked about that earlier in previous how previous series how um, important that is as a foundation so that you can have these conversations and your kids will come and share with you. And um, I just want to share that one, this one testimony and the Chinens can comment because their daughter, Karis is a dear friend of mine and she shared, 
<laughs> okay, I was just really surprised because she shared how when she was dating Marion, her now husband, and you no, know, no, Cars is young, was a young adult by the time she was dating. And you know, you know, when uh, you're just in the moment, you might kiss too much, you know, and I, I okay, I, I, I admit and confess, I probably kissed Rob too much too when we were dating, you know, but you know, you, you're in the moment, you're trying to control yourself and the feelings and the affection. And I remember Karis told me that, you know, she felt so bad one time she kissed Marion too much that, or Marion kissed her, was both a mutual thing. And they, she felt it a need to get more accountability from, from you, dad, <laughs> dad, <laughs> Pastor Cal. And, and she talked with you and she confessed to you and asked for help. And, yeah. and I know you, you're trying to remember that, but that really affected her and blessed her that you were there for her. And that, gosh, just that spoke to me volumes of how she trusted you and felt safe enough to bring it up to you and just share that with you. Where maybe most, most young adults would just keep that a secret from their parents, you know? That was, you know, you built that heart connection. And that didn't just start at young adults. You know, you built that right from young time. Yeah, you know, I think I think that's the key is, you know, um, I, I was thinking about tonight and I, and I thought, where did I learn these things? Because it didn't come natural. I, I can tell you that right now, you know, and um, and and part of it came because um, I got it again. I, I, I kind of emphasize again the importance of getting involved in your in a church. And because we got involved in, uh, uh, you know, I, I worked with the youth. I was a youth pastor. It, it showed me not to be afraid of teenagers, you know, and how to have heart-to-heart -heart connections with teenagers. And um, just, I, I would encourage, or, or even teaching Sunday school. Joy, from when she was in high school, was teaching Sunday school, you know, um, in this little church uh, out here in Kanyoya. And, and it just learning how to relate cross-generationally um, and having heart-to-heart -heart connections, that, that really helped us. Because so many times we're afraid to relate when, when they get to be a certain age or if they're too little. I, you know, and, and uh, you know, in the old days, the whole family, you know, you're living in a small house. You, you're taking the older ones and taking care of the younger ones. The younger ones taking care of the older ones. You have cousins, uncles, and aunties. Everybody's all relating to each other. But that's no longer the case anymore. So we don't know how to relate cross-generationally. And the church provides a great place where we can begin to learn, you know, and you have to learn. You, you walk into the youth group as an adult, and it's really scary. <laughs> and all of our own insecurities of when we were teenagers feeling so awkward, all kick in. We thought we were over those years and they come flooding back, you know? Um, uh, and, but, you know, when you learn from the youth group leaders, you learn how to relate and, and to brave and crossing that chasm so that with your own kids, you begin to develop these, uh, relating to them in an age appropriate manner with with their ages you know and so i would we learned to do that and so as a result that that really helped us through the different ages that our kids were in and i it it, it i'd be the first to admit i did not learn have this on my own i i learned this because we're involved um and, and that's a, that when people say we're too busy man you are cutting yourself off from some rich rich blessings and it's headache, and it's hassles, and it's all that, but it's worth the end result. That, that, I mean, that's where we learned how to, how to do these kinds of stuff, you know? That, that is so good. I mean, I can, I can say my, my kids are 28, both of them, a boy and a girl, Aaron and Jessica, and I am so grateful for the aunties and uncles in the churches who they had relationships with. And sometimes they would go to the aunties or go to the uncles, you know, sometimes without going to Rob and I on certain things. and just to have other aunties and uncles speak into their lives, you know, it was such a blessing, such a yeah. blessing. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Thanks yeah. Everybody that. wins. Everybody yeah. wins. Yeah. You know? So good. But oh. that heart to heart connection, um, you know, I, it, it is, it is a real, real key. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately for many 
uh, many men, we grow up thinking you're not supposed to be connected. It, we grew up thinking it's being fiercely independent is what it means to be a man. Oh. And so it goes against the culture to really learn how to connect, you know, and, um, and so we're having to break strongholds, um, cultural and I believe spiritual strongholds um, in learning how to connect, you know, and if the, and when they go through teen years, they go, there's a time when they go through individuation where they begin to push back from you. And if you take it personally, then you're going to really disconnect. Um, and it's learning to say, no, this is not a personal rejection. I'm going to continue to strive for connection in the midst of all of this that's going on, you know, and it only comes from the Lord, you know. Yeah. So. That's, that's so good. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, you know, one other issue that we want to address too is how do you prepare your kids for dating so that when they do date, they're somewhat have a compass or some helpful things to, 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 to follow. Um, I know Claudia and Daryl, you had some great things to share about that. I remember Claudia, you mentioned, please share about how you prepare your daughter. For example, what do you look for in a guy? Can you just elaborate on, on some of those things of preparing them when they do date? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, well, I had the privilege of homeschooling my girls and, and Micah. And um, so some of it was just through reading um, books to them about, um, about character and um, and so one, one story that, that um, is a favorite of mine is, um, well, when I was working on the mainland for a church, um, I had to bring this one woman to um, one of the pastors because she was getting ready to get married. And she shared with me that she was going to be kissing her groom <laughs> for the first time on their wedding day and I thought wow I've never heard of that you know and um <clears throat> and then I came across this book it's called um the princess and the kiss and um I read this to to my kids when they were little and um and I'll just read like one snippet of it. So the queen says to the princess, God gave this gift to you on the day you were born because he loves you so dearly. And now continued the king, this kiss is yours to keep or to give away as you see fit. But use wisdom, daughter, warned the king and save your kiss for the man you will marry. Never part with it for the sake of a stranger. And so I read this book to them when they were still in, you know, elementary school. And um, sometime, I think during high school, um, Car Carissa, our youngest, she, she told me that she's going to kiss her husband for the first time on her wedding day because of what she heard in this story many years prior. And so, you know, books can be mentors as well. And um, I thought, wow, that, <laughs> that was so special. Yeah, yeah I, I think I wanted to just add that, you know, this whole aspect of dating or talking to your kids about dating, it, Obviously, it doesn't happen when just when they turn teens. It's something, it's really the building of a lifelong relationship with them. Um, I know, uh, again, and we were, I think, fortunate to also see um, the Chinans model that to their own kids and the relationship that they built. And so that was something that also, I think, spurred us on to continue to have this ongoing relationship with our kids from, from day one almost. And, and we wanted to know them, know their friends. And 
I, I remember one story. Um, one of our kids was with um, their friends, and and so uh, you know I said hi to their friend, and and the friend turned to and this was actually uh, our youngest Carissa too. She, the friend turned to Carissa and she goes, "Your dad knows my name," and she goes, "Of course," and and it's because we we wanted to get involved in the lives of our kids. I knew all their friends. Claudia and I both knew them. We knew them by face and name and what was going on because we always had conversations and and so i'm saying that because um talking to them about dating is just part of the process of of life with them and i don't think it's something that we all of a sudden begin to talk about but it's something that is developed throughout the years and so when 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 i think about how do we prep our kids for dating I literally almost think it starts from the time that they're born in, in the sense of the development of the relationship, of being there for them, of conversing with them. And, and so uh, that's an aspect that, you know, I, I just feel like adding on. So, you know, we didn't realize that a book that was read when they were five, six, seven years old or whatever would have influenced them even as they got older and into adult years. And so, um, again, that's just part of the process that we have walked through with our kids. That's so great. And I think that's, that's always so great, you know, to start young. But I also want to encourage your, your parents, if you, even if you um, don't feel you, you, you knew how to build that, it's never too late. You know, yeah. it's never too late to start now. And so we just want to encourage you that, you know, just, just ask the Lord for ideas to build that connection as Daryl and Claudia and, and Cal and Joy have been sharing. Um, you, Claudia, you mentioned something to me too I wanted you to share. I, I love, you would tell your daughters, right? Like, well, when you look for a future boyfriend, you know, these are the qualities to look for. Like, they're generous. Can you share some of those qualities that you imparted to your girls of what to look for in a man? I love that. Um, I just shared with them to to see how they um, how the boy treats his mom, and um, and does he you know show respect to her, and also how does he react when he gets angry, and um, does does he serve others without being asked. And um, does, does he think about others and, and not just himself? So things like that, just to, just to look for as they're getting to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And vice versa, you can share what to look for in a girl, right? And so I think those, those conversations are here and there, here a little, there a little, right? Doesn't have to be a long lecture, but here a little, there a little <laughs> throughout. Right coming and going, right? Just looking for those opportunities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, Pastor Cal and Joe, I want to go back to you. Um, I really love the, what you, the standard that it may seem old fashioned to some people, but I just love it. Um, you had required Karis's boyfriends to ask permission uh, to date her. Can you elaborate on, on, on what that was like and what happened? How did you explain that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it um, it started uh, in high school when they would, um, uh, you know, when it was time for the uh, going to proms and stuff like that, uh -huh. uh, or even dates. Uh, I would tell cars those guys they if they value that much they need to come talk to me, you know. And I'm just a little guy, you know. I'm not, you know, I don't think I'm that scary, but um, but they would, they would have to call me up or come see me in person. And, um, and I would just explain to them how precious Karis is to us and, and that, um, and how valuable she is. And I expect him to treat her in that fashion. Um, and, and so I wanted to know what were their plans, you know, um, and if they didn't have their plans, then I say, no, sorry, you got to have. I got to know what your plans are. <laughs> Come back and see Come me. Come back and see me. <laughs> With the plan. <laughs> uh, 
and um, you know, uh, she she feigned uh, that she didn't like it, but she actually really did like it. <laughs> and, uh, it made her feel really special, and and protected, you know. And 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 the guys didn't always come through either, you know. Um, so we had one uh, in her a junior prom. Was it her junior prom? Was her senior year? Was this the one the guy went off and was oh. smoking bacalolo and. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh, she had one, she had one date that, and the guy said, okay, I got everything down and they were and just friends. They were just friends. They're just friends. I mean, I mean, I like the kid. I mean, we love these boys, you know, um, but, um, but uh, he, he didn't have, his cousin came to pick them up and then they went to um, Kapiolani Park and then the guy started um, smoking over there and um and so then when she came home, I said, Carso, uh, how'd it go? She go and she, when she shared what happened, that was like, I mean, I, well, number one, I was so relieved that nothing terrible had happened because the cousin had picked him up, you know, and was an older guy. And so, uh, so God really protected her. But uh, I immediately called up the guy. I said, you, listen, you, you and I need to talk. And because we had an agreement, um, and so he showed up the next day and he's just crying his eyes out, poor guy, you know, just, and, but I sat down with him and, you know, and I explained to him how disappointed I was, you know, and, uh, and, and he just cried and cried and, and asked for forgiveness and we forgave him and, you know, and it was great that nothing really bad happened, but yeah. I think it, uh, but even to this day, we can talk, even with the boy, we can talk, you know, and, but it, um, these kinds of things, and, and as she got older, you know, these are now men. And even then I would sit down with these men and, um, and talk with these men. Um, uh, and uh, as it turned out, it turned, I mean, so we had that relationship, ongoing relationship yeah. um, with Karis. Uh, and then I told our sons, they needed to talk to the fathers yeah. of the girls that they were dating too. Because you need to honor and yeah. treat how they're going to treat this woman um, was real important, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as well as how they're going to treat our daughter. And and Marion treats Karis fabulously. He is yeah. he's a much better husband than I ever was, man. He was he was he's fantastic. Yeah, the way. He, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so. I remember Karis told me that you made the boys, and in her recollection, you would make the boys promise to protect her emotionally, mentally, spiritually, sexually, you know, so that they understood that, that their role is to really help look out for her and protect her. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's so, yeah. so awesome. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, even with Marion once, you know, there was someone in, uh, uh, he was from another church and in this other church, this other woman was really begin sharing rumors about about Karis, uh, mm -hmm. really ugly rumors about Karis, mm -hmm. and um, and I I pulled Marion on the side, and this is when they were dating. I said, Mary, I said, listen, you're the one who has to stand up for Car, you know, and and if these are lies that are being spread, you need to confront this person, mm -hmm. you know, because you're her protector in that situation. Mm -hmm. And um, and he did, you know, and, it, and it, you know, it wasn't in a mean way, a power struggle. He, and it found, found out later that the girl was hurt by something else, not nothing in cars did, but, and, and it proved to be more reconciling, you know, again. So um, yeah, it, uh, I, I think it's something that, that um, yeah, we see it continue on to this day. We see our sons treating their wives in that way and their families in that way. So, yeah. That's so good. I just love that. And, you know, I, I what something else got from all four of you is that um, it's really speaking here a little, there a little. And Joy, um, I remember Karis was telling me too that you would give these one-liners to her that would stick in her mind that actually really 
stuck with her for a long time in her mind. And she, she shared this one time where you think she was going to break up with a boy and she mentioned to you and you mentioned to her, well, don't go walking on the beach alone. Anyway, she went, she went out with her boyfriend, broke up. And then as they were, he was driving her home and he was of course very sad. Uh, he, he said to her, Oh, you want to go walk, go walk, go walk on the beach a while. <laughs> <laughs> and he, she heard your voice in her mind saying, don't go walking on the beach. And so she said no to him and, you know, brought, he brought her right home. But I think it's really neat, you know, to, as mothers and as fathers, to say those one-liners as, as you feel led, you know, and just drop those gems into their minds and hearts because you never know <laughs> what they're going to retain, right? Yeah. Yeah, those are prophetic words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about that back then, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it surprises. Um, you know, how did you pre did you prepare your uh, sons or how you prepare your daughters? Like I, I had this question. Um, you know, sometimes boys, certain boys, they just know how to pursue a girl, maybe naturally or innately, whereas some boys really don't know how, or you know, they need some coaching um, when it's time to date in their young adult years. Let's say. Um, or vice versa for a girl, how do you, as a girl, you know, respond and, you know, um, in a good way, godly way. Um, do you guys have anything to share on, on those things of any way that you, you, you maybe help prepare them? Or, or were your kids just kind of naturally kind of new? Because some kids just have a natural EQ, you know, they just kind of know how to do it. What was your experiences, both of you, all, both couples? Well, we just talked to our eldest son. You know, and he said, yeah, dad, you should have done that. You should have prepared me for how to ask a girl out, you know. <laughs> so I struck a big zero on that one, okay. So <laughs> I said, I told him it, it was like a lot, like you're saying, along the way, you know, like how, um, you know, dad would treat me and, you know, I would treat him and it's like, you're observing this like modeling to you yeah. you know along the way it wasn't like sit, sit down here's the class <laughs> you how to you know yeah but he said no he goes yeah 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 but you still should have sat down and <laughs> yeah. with me and talked to me about it so yeah <laughs> oh my gosh Modest, do you have any comments on that uh yeah you know it's funny that Kel said that because I, I'll be honest, I, there wasn't anything intentional that I did with Micah, but I think the one thing that Claudia and I were intentional about was trying to model what we felt like was a healthy relationship um, that we had, you know, like we would always go out on dates. Um, I've always tried to treat Claudia with respect. And in fact, that's, if you, if you ask your, if you ask my kids or our kids, what is the one thing that I really harped on them about? And I think they would all say respecting mommy. And because uh, that was one thing that really got my goat, I, you know, disrespect. And so I've always tried to instill respect and care and nurture and serving and all these kind of things. And, and we're kind of hoping that uh, I guess what we modeled would be something that they have in their heads about what um, marriage should be like. And mm -hmm. so, I, in fact, I know Micah shared, uh, I think even, you know, uh, when he had a chance to share on this explicit call a few weeks ago that, um, you know, he, he tries to treat his wife the way that he saw me treating Claudia. And I think that was one thing that, uh, me, that was the only thing that I think we tried to do. But I, yeah, did I actually sit down uh cal i am joining you i got a big zero on that one in terms of definitely just like son this is how you do it uh i yeah i am definitely not uh an expert in that area um, i have something really precious so aaron i got permission from my son aaron when he was a young adult you know well, he's still a young adult but when he was going to uh community college he kind of liked this girl but he had no clue how to approach and how to ask and you know and it was so cute um a few times i i would observe rob giving him ideas of like 
what to actually say and how to respond because he just didn't know, you know, and, and, and then he Bob would follow up with him. So how did it go? And, you know, it, it was um, kind of funny um, <laughs> in some situations, but it was cute, you know, and I just thought, thought oh, this is so cool. And I th so I think there is a place yeah, for absolutely. fathers yeah. and mothers to, to coach them because, so, yeah. you know, there's a thing called social awkwardness and, and maybe we can help our kids avoid some of that if we can pass on some, some information of how, what does a girl think or what does a boy think? Oh, and also teaching that, right? Fathers, what goes on in a boy's mind that girls often have no clue about. <laughs> right, Pastor Cal, remember you, you shared that <laughs> Cars had no clue what goes on in a boy's mind. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, well, like, you know, on the negative side, you have these manipulative boys, too, mm -hmm. that yeah. they play the victim role, and they try and elicit a motherly, uh, they play like a baby, and so it elicits a motherly affection from the girl, but it is all manipulation for the mm -hmm. guy to get the girl. And, and so, you know, I, I saw some of the guys, I mean, Cara said so much guys date her, okay? She had so much guys tell her, oh, God told me you're the one that I'm supposed to marry, or, you know, you're supposed to marry me. <laughs> and, um, and they pull the God card. So the God card bears no water for cars, okay? So <laughs> um, and uh, and which we we teach her that you know we taught her that growing up you know that guys will use the God card all the time, um, and and you cannot let that manipulate. That's manipulation that's mm. going on, you know, yeah. uh, and and secondly you know or they or they manipulate using other ways you know um, and so we'll just those are some of the things we'd have to sit down. And I would share with Karis. You know, and she never believed me. She said, no, guys don't think like that. You know, I said, car, come on. You know, um, she goes, dad, you're just so old fashioned. You don't know how guys think, you know, and guys are different today. And, um, and slowly the revelation began to hit her that, yeah, you know, so when, so Daniel, well, you tell the story about Daniel and Aaron when he went to Spokane. Well, I'll start the story and yeah. you can finish it. <laughs> Daniel went to school in Canada and he was dating Erin and she was six hours away from where his school was. And so he would drive the six hours in this not so um, safe car, but he got there. But um, you'd have to spend the weekend there. Yeah, he would Yeah, drive on a Friday and then come back on Sunday but um, of course Aaron had to get a place um, of a guy's place for him to stay at and um, one day Cal um, had both of them on the phone and he said he had to talk with them. Well it's the first time he, he drove over to Spokane from uh, Vancouver uh, and um, so this is going to be the first weekend. So we said, okay, well, I want to talk with both of you guys. So uh, we had, um, now give me a background. We had a, a big Labrador retriever, big, beautiful, yellow, 100 pound Labrador retriever. We just absolutely loved it. His name was Oli. Um, but whenever dogs were in heat, that 100 pound dog could climb our five foot fence, okay? <laughs> Nothing could stop him, man. He climbed over the fence. He climbed under the fence. He's nothing could stop Oli if there's a woman dog in heat someplace. Um, and um, and we tried building all these barriers. He would get through our barrier. We, we I remember we built a barrier. Said, and Daniel and I worked together to build these barriers. I said, no way is Oli gonna get out now. Sure enough, he gets out. You know. So we finally got this electric fence. Uh, you know, the electric wire, you put it around and you put this collar on the dog and they get too close to the fence, they get shot, you know? Yeah. So we put that electric fence up, brother Oli takes the pain and gets through that fence. <laughs> okay. So, so, um, so I, I sat him down and we sat them down and I said, now, now, Aaron, I want you to understand one thing. I said, and Daniel, that from 11 o'clock 
at night, when you guys are together, Daniel changes and becomes Oli, okay? In fact, <laughs> I want you to know that at a certain time, all men become Oli, okay? So you got to... And I just want to tell you right now that that's something you guys got to be super careful of, you know, because I'm, I'm speaking as an Oli myself, you know what I mean? So... <laughs> Ah, that's so real and raw and fun, funny. Yeah. yeah. So we just talked to Erin tonight, and I said, "Do you remember that?" Us telling. She goes, "I will never forget that." <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a really good word picture. That's gonna, you know, helps to be memorable, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so good. That's so good. You know, we have, we have about ten more minutes, but I did want to because it's one. One a really good question. Um, can you guys comment on what do you do as a parent if you do not approve of what of the boyfriend or girlfriend that your son or daughter is dating? How do you navigate that? Numara, do you want you have some comments on that? Yeah, you want to share? Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, just, uh, yeah. Claude, you had said something about um, you know you can you can share your your. Uh, what you feel, um, but you know, you say something along the lines of, you know, you know how I feel, but I want, we want you to know that no matter your choices, we still will love you so much or something like that. Right. Oh, right, right, you right. Elaborate something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, this was, um, <laughs> this was when uh, Micah was still in high school and and he knew he knew what how Daryl and I felt about you know um, dating, but he still <clears throat> wanted to um, do it anyway. And so we talked to our one of our friends, and um, they just passed along um, some wisdom to us that. You know, they they themselves um, encountered a situation where their daughter was the youth group leader, and um, she uh, was she was dating a boy in the youth group that she was a leader of, and um, her parents did not approve of it, and but she wanted to do it anyway, and so what they learned from that was to value relationship over, um, over rules, you know, relationship over rules. And so, um, so with Micah, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know how we feel, but um, we, we will um, love you no matter what you decide to do. So, so that's what happened for us. Yeah, I think we just, we really came to the place where we knew that we had to value the relationship over being right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we couldn't sacrifice that. And so we really wanted that, you know, in that situation for Micah. But I think, you know, all our kids to know that we will always be there for them no matter what, even if we, we're disagreeing. And I think another point behind that is that we had to learn to just really trust that, um, you know, the things that we had talked about, the things that we had hopefully instilled in their lives, um, that they would eventually make the right decisions. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the way God is with us, right? I mean, you think about God entrusts to us and that we hopefully, I mean, that's the whole thing about free will. We knew that we couldn't control our kids. We can't force them to make certain decisions. And so we also have to trust that the relationship will be strong enough to help them. And if, and we wanted to have that open door so that if there were mistakes or things that went wrong, that he'd feel okay with us, you know, they would feel okay with coming and talking with us about it. So you know, sometimes even though we may not agree with their decisions, um, again, we really had to, we valued the relationship above all of that. And, yeah. and so, 
that's that's what we oh, yeah. that's so good okay we have a couple more questions so cal and joe i want you to be thinking about this one um can you think of an encouragement to the single parents who are who are listening okay and then while you're thinking about that darling and claudia can you um uh just comment on maybe in a couple minutes what do you what what if your child never dated and doesn't care to date Oh, you want us to answer that one now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you do if, you're, if you're, your child never dated or doesn't mm -hmm. care? I'm not sure if this person is referring to a teenager or a young adult, but right. in general. I, you know, I, I think for, for us, um, it's understanding that, one, everybody's different. And so, you know, just being there for them. Uh, we, you know, our girls... Um, both of them, who personally <laughs> I feel are two beautiful, beautiful girls, but uh, you know they have not dated, and uh, we, you know, from my side, I they know I pray that a, a spouse, godly spouse, God would bring a godly man for for the both of them. But even if you know nothing happens, then you know that's okay too. Uh, I think sometimes in this world we can feel like somehow we're incomplete if we don't have a spouse or we don't marry somebody, but mm -hmm. you know, I don't think that's true because God's our completer. Um, and, and so, because I think everybody's at different stages and um, again, I think as long as we're there for them as parents and, mm -hmm. you know, and we want to support them no matter where they are in their stage of dating or non dating or anything like that. Um, so anyway, that's my, that, that's good. And I was thinking too, you know, the Bible, um, Paul does say better to stay single. So I'm just saying that people who never end up finding a spouse or they don't feel a desire, it doesn't mean that they're any second class kingdom citizens at all. Cause God uses married couples. God uses single people and God has a plan for your child, I believe. And no matter what, you know, and so all we can do is pray and see, yep. I mean, it, I, I personally would, would just keep praying and not worry too much about it because God has a has a call, right, for each one. But th thank you so much. Amen. And lastly, uh, Chinens, do you have a, just an encouragement to uh, single parents who are listening? Because I know we talked a lot about married couples and, you know, all of you being models to your kids. But any encouragement, last, last few words of encouragement to single parents? I think it's real important that... Um the children see you spending time with the Lord because the Lord will be um, your husband, your, um, your spouse, that um, you're going to the Lord, that he's number one. And when they can see that, that is going to give them the security. And so I think that is so important that they see you um, you know, spending time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great answer. Thank you so much. Yeah. And both, can the four of you just close us in prayer and just pray a blessing over all the parents and a blessing over their children who they love so much and care about? So, Yamadas, you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity um, to share some of our experiences, but also uh, to share the wisdom that you have given all of us. And Lord, I just want to speak a blessing over all the, the families, over all the parents, over all the, the teens or those who are in those dating years, that you would be the rock, that you would be um, the anchor for their lives. Lord, I thank you that what you have in store for us as we head into um, dating as we head into marriage is is just something so glorious and lord i pray that we would learn to protect that gift that you have blessed us with i pray father that you would continue to um, guard and literally hedge in people's hearts especially when they could be vulnerable um, and um, and exposed and and so father may may your holy spirit uh, just lead and guide every single family every single uh, household as they navigate their ways through this time. 
uh, Lord, I thank you that you are the answer that uh, for all of us. And as we look to you, you will lead us and guide us in all these things. So, Father, thank you. Yes, Lord. And um, <clears throat> I just pray for the parents that um, would just help them to uh, instill godly character into their children. And um, just pray for um, the spouses to be the same thing, that, that God would prepare them by um, building godly character in them as well. And um, Lord, we just pray that you would help all these children to um, find their identity in you so that you know, our, our identity determines our destiny. So I just pray that you would um, help them to receive revelation of what Jesus um, um, died for, the, the cost that, the things that he paid for, our, um, that we are kings, we are priests, we are ambassadors for God, that we sit at the right hand of the Father, um, in heavenly places, just so that they would know who they are and um, the authority that they carry. And um, just knowing who they are will, will um, catapult them into their futures. So we pray this in Jesus' name. Father, thank you that you love um, families, Lord. Mm. Thank you. Um, that you have given us children, that they are reward from you, mm -hmm. and such a blessing, Lord. I pray, God, for every family on this call, Lord, that mm -hmm. you will bless them, that you would just pour out your grace upon them. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that, um, yeah, during this time, Lord, you said it's a time of reset, and so I pray for a reset for all the mm -hmm. families, Lord, that yes. as they spend time together, mm -hmm. as they um, relate with one another, as they mm -hmm. learn how to love each other. And um, Lord, I just pray your anointing upon each one. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here to um, guide us and help us. And so we just pray a blessing on every um, family tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, I just thank you for the grace that uh, we stand by grace. We cannot do, we can do nothing apart from you. Yes. And so Lord, we just declare, God, your grace over every person here. They're all seeking, they're wanting, they're knocking uh, after you, God. So bless every family here, Lord, with your presence and your grace, that this is a time, Lord, where you're rising upon your people. And so bless them with your grace now, God. And that every family here is going to be able to say, wow, you know, uh, years from now, it was all your grace, God. And mm -hmm. they're going to be so blessed, Lord. And we thank you now, Lord, for them just joining us today, God. Thank you for the privilege it's been to share uh, with all of these people. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. All of you, four of you have been such a blessing to all of us tonight. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah. Elisa, you have some final words, maybe a poll or something like that you were mentioned. Yeah, so you should, um, yeah, thanks everybody. That was really great. Um, you should see a poll that just popped up for you. So if you folks who are still on the line could go ahead and fill that out, it should just take a couple couple minutes and in the meantime I will let you know that next week we are going to have our sixth parent power hour and the title is the value of a parent's healing journey the impact on your family and our mm. special guest is pastor Rob Gross wow excellent yeah it's going to be great and so also um, I had sent you folks a a um, message that I we have a free gift to give to you it's um a recording by Dan Chun actually speaking to the parents about how to pick a spouse. So that should be fun to listen to. So if I don't already have your email, go ahead and private um, message me. And then also 
um, with that, if you could give us a little bit of feedback, if you had any takeaways or something that you appreciated about tonight, that would be great. And then we could let other people know, hey, you should be here because it's really fun. So that's it. And um, we'll just give you a couple minutes to fill that, that out. And if you want more content, we have some more free content on our website at www.explicitmovement.org. So you can join the movement. I want to say that that free resource, um, you need to sign up and give Elisa your email if we don't have it yet, because uh, uh, Dan Chen wrote a book on how to pick a spouse. And what a great resource for parents and how to guide and put those nuggets of gold, you know, into your, your child's mind and heart. Um, you know, as they're, as you're going through the teenage years and even young adults, you could go through it together as a child and adult child and, and parent or a teenager and parent, you know, and just talk about it. So it's a great resource. You guys will love that too. So thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Just, thank, you. Just gonna, thank you. We're just going to hang out a little bit for you guys to finish up those, um, different uh, things that Elisa asked you to, and uh, Daryl and Claudie and Cal and Joy, thank you so much. You know, you're free to go, um, but we just wanna say, appreciate you. If you wanna hang out with us a little while, that, that's fine too, for maybe another 10 minutes, um, that's fine too, if people have more questions. But other than that, we just thank you for your time. Oh yeah, no, you're welcome. Thank you so much for inviting us. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from Cal and Joy right now. All four of you. So good. So good. Yeah. I, I had this, uh, just as a side note, I had uh, two, I don't know if some of you know Landon and Logan Mauricio. They, they're, they dated as seniors in high school, but their parents, guided the, the boys and said you need to ask permission you can date from the girl's parents and they did and they would tell the, the the parents of the girl um here's my phone number i will text you when i leave a place and i will text you when we get there um you let me know what time you want your daughter home and i will make sure that she's home on time you can call me anytime anywhere when, when i'm out with your you know your daughter um, I want to be accountable to you. I will, you know, protect her purity and I want to make sure Jesus is number one. And they made sure that they make got to, the parents got to know them, you know, as part of the family and then vice versa. So um, there was a high standards that their father and mother put on those two boys if they wanted to date in high school. So they waited till senior, but um, that's what they, they did. They, they told the uh, parents of the girl, um, we, I hold, we want to be accountable to you um, for, for anything, you know, for, for protecting your daughter. And we want to keep Jesus first, you know, and I thought that was really high standard, <laughs> really good. But, you know, just some, just some more ideas, you know, just every family will be different, but, you know, I think great wisdom was shared, shared today um, about waiting, you know. Um, so thank you. Any questions? Any other questions before they sign off? No? Um, I have a question. What if you di we didn't do any of the things that they said? We did none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> I'm How old are your kids? Are they, are they in high school or young adults now, Lori? No, they're 20 something already. Um, okay. So it's like, you know, it's like, I wish I had had parents like you guys, or I wish that I had said those things, but long story but it didn't happen and so i know michelle you said never too late but i'm like it sort of is because and then you know and if parents aren't in agreement i'm sh i'm sure there's a lot of that going on too mm. so like yeah they're 20 somethings so what do you do thank you i think one of the keys you know and and i really appreciate your honesty and uh in sharing and your vulnerability we've all I mean, honestly, we've, we made tremendous mistakes. And, um, you know, I am just blessed that um, Joy is still married to me. Uh, I was just telling well, one of our other pastor friends, if I was married to me, I wouldn't be married today. You know, <laughs> um, 
and um, and uh, it's it's seeking for a heart and praying for and working towards heart to heart connections, um, and and which is what um, it began with with uh, what Michelle shared. Uh, I would really encourage you to read um, uh, Danny Silk's book, Keep Your Love On, um, because it begins to give us tools of how to have heart-to-heart -heart connections um, with, with our, our adult children and, um, and uh, beginning to reach out so that there is a, a chance for them to share with us and us to share with them. And, but, and then also praying our heads off every day and claiming the promise that when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, not only we will be saved, but our entire Ohana will be saved. And, uh, and we see, and, uh, and just claiming these promises from the Lord and not giving in to the, the attacks of the enemy to just try and defile you. So yeah, um, I would, yeah, that would be the two things is pray and, and you may need to apologize to them. You know, um, I've, I still apologize to my kids to this day, you know, and and because uh, I made many mistakes, and it's it's learning how to apologize from our heart and say, you know, I really screwed up. I'm really sorry, you know. And will you please forgive me? Um, so uh, I would encourage just continuing to um, seek for that heart to heart connection, like what what Claudie said, seeking love over being right, because um, you can be right and lose love. And then everybody loses. So, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be either or. It shouldn't be either, either or. But sometimes we stand more for being right than, than for love. So, yeah. I, I would just <laughs> ditto that real quick, too, that, um, you know, prayer in particular, you know, only by God's grace. Because, yeah, we have made a lot of, lot of mistakes in, in our parenting. But I'm just so thankful for the, the Lord's grace covering. And, and the prayers have, you know, and I know it's my wife's prayers that really have gotten us through, uh, you know, our teen years with the kids and everything like that. Um, but, you know, that, that is, don't ever un underestimate that, the, the power of prayer. And so uh, that is, is so true. And I had another thought, but in my age, the train leaves the station very quickly. <laughs> I was thinking of that, um, the importance of eating together. And, oh, then, right. and even with your um, adult children, you know, setting aside um, the, as much time as you can and set it, you know, that we're going to eat together. And that, I think, begins building the relationship too. Right. Yeah, that's really I'd like to make a comment if I could. Hi, this is Mark. And, um, you know, when this first started, I was uh, struggling quite a bit because it was, seemed like it was about no dating, no dating in high school. But then in the end, um, Daryl had made the comment that, um, you know, he may, if you're not really happy with your child's partner, you know, you need to have a talk, but respect them and love them anyway, no matter what their decision is. And kind of we're in that boat. Our daughter wanted to date. We didn't want her to date yet, um, so I sat down with her and her guy she wanted to date on face uh, on camera because I wanted him to see my face and had a similar talk about telling him she's my baby. You know, I need you to I need you to be a good guy. I'm I'm trusting you're going to be a good guy and I'm going to allow you guys to date because I'm believe I believe kind of a thing and um so it's tough. Um, but you know, it's not that I disagree with who she wants to be with. He seems like a really good guy, you know, great mm -hmm. grades, great ambition. He's going to be graduating, going to Air Force Academy, you know, it seems like a good guy, um, which makes it easier. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but so yeah. one of the things I was talking to my wife about earlier is, is I know it's a little bit early to be dating. I know they should be focusing on high school. I've talked to her about you guys already, actually, in the middle of this call. I was in the kitchen feeding her, and I was telling her about the couple met in high school. They're high school sweethearts, and they're still together and married all these years. And their child was married, high school sweetheart, and they're happily married. I said, so, honey, it can't happen. You know, I know it's early to be talking about that, but, hey, there's nothing wrong with the thought of that being 
what you're pursuing now as a young girl, the question is, can they navigate that through high school and college and have it be one of these stories that you guys are sharing? And I can now only say, I hope so. You know, and, and as far as the physical stuff, I told them, look, um, and the same thing Daryl said, um, hopefully the, uh, the properties we talked to her about and the conversations we had at this point, we can only trust they're gonna do the right thing. They're always together. That's the scary part. And I just want to I just want to make some closing thoughts on that. Even if they do make the wrong mistake, even if they do get pregnant, even if they do lose their virginity, how as parents will we respond is that we will respond in grace and in love, and you know uh, we're not going to condemn them or make them feel like they're so judged. You know that we're just so disappointed. You know it's really like like the like the couple say is that we're still gonna have love triumph over it yeah because god is a god that redeems and can heal and can restore and so we want to be that i think the parent that can be a conduit for that restoration too if that should happen so um, great great comments thank you so much everybody this has been so good i wish i had this when my kids were young and i before they started to think. but bless all of you i just want to close the evening out and um, thank you so much for your participation.